G'day, welcome back to Dad vs. Son and our continuing playthrough of Illusions of Glory by GMT. Um, in the last video we finished off the fall or autumn 1916 turn and we're about to start the winter of 1916. The um, Lines are relatively static at the moment, as one would expect in the Great War. Um, we're all into more of a battle of attrition than anything else, and the Austro-Hungarians are having the worst part of that, as would be expected. Um, during the last turn, the Allies used a combat card, and as I said, we're using uh, Stuka Joe's wonderful card-driven system. So at the moment, my B card, B deck, is empty until I play a one ox, and then I can fill that up again. So the most cards that I'll have visual at any time will be four for the allies, and we still have five potential visual cards for the central powers. At this time, we only have one visual card for the Allies, and that's the D card, which is the November Events card, which is pretty useless to me for an event at the moment because I need some LCUs in Lemnos before I can use it. Um, in the Central Powers, they have the War in Africa card, um, the King Constantine card, which they're holding off to try and use immediately after we get Greece so that they can take Greece out and basically uh, kick us in the bum and they have the Fall of the Tsar card but they can't be played uh, again as an event until the Russian Revolution has been played so it's much of a muchness across the board at the moment and we are ready to go we have the Allied player must do a British-French offensive and the only British-French troops as such that we have on the board is the leader, Sarail, and the combined National Defence Corps of Britain and Greece in Salonika. Um, the Central Powers have to uh, take a bash at Italy again with the Austro-Hungarians. So let's see what we have. And it's a DE for the Allies, so that's their November events card, and they get Putnik again. Do -do. Which we can only use for ops points or for replacement points now because uh, Serbia has collapsed. Now, we have quite a few Russian units that have been reduced and we have a core unit that has been obliterated at the moment, but not totally eliminated. So we could use it for its four ops points or we could get uh, two replacement for points for the Allies, two for Italy and three for Russia. Now, if I do that, I'm also going to be giving up the initiative again, um, which is not a very good move when I've got some people on the run. So, I don't want to lose those um, replacement points, though, so I think I'm going to have to. So we're going to play Putnik for his replacement points. So first go is whoop, replacements and we get three for the Russians, two for the Allies and two for Italy. And that goes back into our bag of tricks and the central player, central powers get a C which is German Reinforcements. Uh, cannot be played as a reinforcement card before the winter of 16. Well, we are in the winter of 16, so they could do it if they wished. 
Now, if they do that, their troop quality will still be pretty damn fine. And that would give them one, two, ooh, two cores and the German heavy artillery. Okay. And I think that might be worth their while. So we're going to play that for its reinforcements. Which means that their uh, troop quality goes down from 12 to 10 with the Buffed and the Great Hairy Arm in the way. Okay, so let's pull those pieces out for them. So they get the 22nd Reserve and the 27th Reserve Infantry. Do, do, 22nd and 27th. So there's the 27th. And there is the 22nd. And they also get the German Heavy Artillery. Okay. And that card runs away. Now, where do we want to put these bits and pieces? Okay, so I'm going to actually put the heavy artillery into Königsberg. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to check first because I want to make sure I'm, I am pretty damn sure that uh, headquarters and heavy artillery. 36 do not affect um, yeah do not count towards stacking limits do not count towards besieging requirements they've got to end their movement with a friendly unit uh, if all units stack with the headquarters or heavy artillery are destroyed or permanently eliminated the headquarters and artillery are permanently eliminated as well only one friendly headquarters or German heavy artillery can occupy space with other units. But a gen, uh, heavy artillery can go with a leader. Any uh, a HQ can participate in only one attack per action round, but can be withheld from an attack in which it could participate. It must participate in the defence of the space that it occupies, but they never absorb combat losses. A HQ that loses a combat is reduced by one step. If it was already reduced, it's permanently eliminated. Any HQ that wins a combat is increased by one step if it was reduced, but a full strength one receives no bonus. A uh, headquarters that participates in a combat is unaffected if the result is a tie. Heavy artillery may participate in an attack. It does not participate in defence. Okie dokie. So, participate in an attack but not a defence. Fair enough. Right. So we've got the Germans there. Okay, so I'm going to put the 22nd reserve into Thorn, which gives them their max now. Um, I don't think we've got one there, no. So I want to be able to place the heavy artillery in where the Germans are going to make a nuisance of themselves. Um, so what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to place them... I'm going to place the artillery into Königsberg. 
for the time being and the other reserve unit I'm going to place into Berlin so I can be brought forward as required. Righto, so that's their turn over and done with. Back to the Allies. And we have an A or B, and our B is empty, remember? So we have the Siege of Premzel. Use this card for Ops. It gives us one um, war status point. It reduces the Austria-Hungarian national will again. So their national will would come down to eight. And for the rest of this turn, any AP attack against an undestroyed CP fort receives... A plus one die roll modifier. So we're going to play that. Okay, so first thing is we get one war status point, taking us up to 13, taking the combined war status up to 26. We're getting closer to an armistice. Uh, we can use this card for ops, so we get four ops points. We have a minus one to the national will of the Austria-Hungarians and we get a plus one die roll modifier against an undestroyed CP fort. So let's have a look at what we want to do. Okay, so we know for a fact that the British French must do an attack and at the moment we could what have we got here so we've got three four five six with the leader we have against three we have a minus one die roll modifier against three uh, now, six. So we'd also get a left shift for the mountains. In fact, we'd get two left shifts because of the weather. So that's not a good idea at the moment. Bugger. Hmm. So that would take our six down to four, and they'd have three, and we'd have a minus one modifier as well. Well, if we roll high enough, it'll be okay. We're going to do it. So we're going to do an attack from Valore into Monastir. And that will meet our mandatory offensive. Um, we are going to have a look here. So we have a fort. We have a road. Okay. We're going to do an attack from Rovereto into Trent. And that's simply because we do have these two Italian replacement points, so that'll help to uh, beef that up a little bit. And it's also going to help to offset what the Austria-Hungarians can do down on the Italian front, seeing as that's what they have to do. Um, do, 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 do. And we are also going to do a cheeky and do an attack from those two areas into 
got a got a Zia? I think, maybe. Okay. So we are doing an event. Righto. We'll do the Albanian adventure down here first. So let's bring the Makins over again. Get it as close as possible so that hopefully there's no glare. So as we said in here, we have three, four, five, six points of mayhem for the allies. Uh, but we're attacking into mountains during severe weather. So we get two shifts to the left, which takes us down to four. And we also have a minus one die roll modifier for that. And we are going into Monastir. And they have three. Okay, combat card wise, we have nothing for the allies. Uh, and we have no combat cards for the central powers. Okay, so attacking into here, um, our Siege of Premzel does not affect. So it's a straight up with a minus one die roll modifier for the allies. Ouch! So they get a six and we end up with a two. So their six is four damage to us. And our two is only two damage to them. So we're going to reduce them down to two. But they've done six to us. Okay. So if we do two there. Three, four. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. The 26 core is going to take four hits. And then its replacement will take one, two more. Or six. And that will leave us like that. And just checking again. And the headquarters that loses the combat is reduced by one step. So, not good. So we've got to win a combat with him so that we can... Uh, get along. Okay, so that's that one out of the way. We'll do this Trent offensive next. So we have three, six, nine. We are attacking into mountains. So we get a shift to the left and it's severe weather so two shifts to the left which takes us down to five the enemy has two five seven for the fort it's not looking good is it um and they have a trench which means offensive fire is another shift down. We go down to a three. And defensive fire is a shift to the right. So they're up to their... Sorry, make sure again. They had seven. Yep, six, seven. They get a shift to the right up to eight, nine. And we had three, six, nine with one shift for the mountains, uh, one shift for the severe weather, 
one shift for the trench. So we're down to four, they're up to eight, nine. Um, and we get a plus one modifier because we're into a fort which has not been hey, which has not been damaged. Sorry, I've got Austria Hungarians running away. Okay, so a plus one die roll modifier for us, and that is all. Okay, give me a good un. <laughs> and that's a bad un. So it's six against two, so ours becomes a three, which is three damage, and their six is seven damage to us, just for the fun of it. Okay, so their three damage. They're going to take two on 20 core. And they're going to take one on the SCU. We have to take seven. So we're going to take two on one core. Two on five core. That's five, uh, four. going to have to wipe a core out, aren't we? And we'll have to take two on, another two on five core, so that's six. Their troop quality, sorry, it's gone down two now. And we get our little SCU, which we have to lose one more on. So, no, I bit off more than I could chew there. But, we've helped. Okay, and now we have well, this one. Okay, so we have 3, 6, 9, 18. So we've got a 16 plus for the allies. And we have a... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the central powers. And again, we get a shift because we are, ah, we're not attacking into mountains. So we don't get the shift for mountains. We don't get the shift for severe weather. We get a plus one die roll modifier and a minus one die roll of then modifier. Let me just check that again. Let's make sure we're not attacking into mountains. Severe weather. No. Okay. Um, ba -ba. But they have a trench, which means that we get a left shift down to 13 to 15. And they get a right shift, which brings them up to 10, 12. Righto, here we go. That's a bit better. Okay. So the allies get a five with a plus one, minus one. I think which I screwed up over there, but I don't think it would have made too much of a difference. Yes, it would have. Uh, they only had to lose two, not three. So they're going to keep 20 core there full, and they're going to get rid of that Austria-Hungarian unit over there. Apologies. Uh, I took the plus one die roll modifier, I didn't take off the minus one for the uh, roads. Okay, so we have a 
plus one, minus one for the allies, so that's five, which gives us seven. And they have a nothing, which gives them seven as well. Okay, seven each. So we'll start with them. And they will go two. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, sorry, wait one, wait one, wait one. They get to do their damage before we get to attack. So, ours doesn't matter at the moment because we're going across water. Sorry, sorry. So they're going to do seven damage to us before we even get to attack. So we'll take two there. And we'll take... 2 on 13 core is 4. We will take another 2 on 13 core is 6. And we will take 1 on the SCU like that. Okay, this give me a tick. Okay, sorry about that. Back again. Okay, so we've taken our losses prior to our attack. So let me just put this back. Um, no, they were already down, weren't they? Two, four, six, eight. No, they had nine. That's right. I'll get this right eventually. Okay, so now we do our attack. And we are attacking with three, six, eight, nine. And six is 15 rather than 18. So we come in on the 13 to 15. Uh, they have a trench, which gives us a shift to the left, down to the 10-12. Um, and we get a plus one, minus one die roll modifier. And again, we rolled a five, so it's seven anyway. Yep. Okay. So... Going back to where we were. Let's see what we've got here. So if they take two there, we've got to take another two there. That's four, the four core, which means they're through quality. Oh, there they are. All the way down there. They're down to four now. Goes down. They get... They do not have an SCU. So I believe that one is totally eliminated. Uh, so they've done two, four. They do five, six. And they do... Seven, like that. So that did help us in one area. Righto. Sorry for the screw around. Um, I guess I'm just that kind of guy. Okay, back over to our little central powers who get an A, B, C. So their A is the war in Africa. Their B is the Tsar's armories, and the C is the November coup. Right, -o. so let's have a look at uh, war in Africa. For that, they'll get one war status point. They'll get to use the card for its four ops value. And RPs cannot be spent to repair or rebuild APA units this turn. 
so that's not really going to hurt us a great deal. But that card can also be used for one of their allies, two Austria-Hungarian and three German replacement points. The Tsar's Armouries. Uh, that cannot be played until CP units capture a VP space in Russia after Fall of the Tsar has been played. Okay. And Fall of the Tsar hasn't been played, so they can use that for three Ops points, or one Austria-Hungarian and two German replacements. Or they have uh, November Coup, which again cannot be played until the Fall of the Tsar has been played. So again, they can use that for two Ops, and, or one German replacement point. Okay. So... They have to do an, uh, an offensive down here against the Italian. Oh, no, they have to do an offensive against the Italians, not necessarily down here. Right. So they could use 13 core here, which is reduced, to do an attack into Volore. And that would be a 2 with a minus 1 die roll modifier into here, which would be for a 2 on the small, uh, the light fire table. So they could do a maximum of 3 damage to us, which would uh, totally destroy Sorail as well, even if they only do two damage. Yep, they've only got to do two damage to do that. So all they need then would be a, they'd have to roll a three or, sorry, it's gonna be a minus one modifier. Da, da, da. would have to roll a a four or a five uh, a four or better I should say and the most we could do with two is two damage to them so is it worthwhile for them to do that it would knock the Italians out of Albania. Uh, the only trouble is 13 Corps couldn't move forward into there because it's already a reduced unit, even if um, it survives. Um, dum -dum. They need to bring these units forward. So that could be one, two. Okay, I think, and therefore I am. Um, what do they want to do? Okay. They're going to use the War in Africa card for its Ops value. And they're going to move this unit. They're going to use, move some of These units is two. They're going to move some of these units, which is three. And they're going to try and do that. So first things first, 19 core here can move three. 
and it's going to go one, two, three in possession as a blocking force against Galice. I know that these can still come down this way, but uh, we're doing the bestest we can. Okay, then we're going to move twenty core here. One, two, three to Isterberg. Bum, bum, bum. And we're going to move this SCU, one, two, three, into the same, no we're not. Yes we are, one, two, three, into Isterberg as well. Whoops, sorry. Then we're going to move the guards unit. One, into Marienburg. I don't want to move troops into here at the moment um, simply because this gives me a place where I can retreat to. So that's done. That, whoop, that's messed up. That's done. And that still leaves me the 27th reserve to come over when needed. Righto, so the battle of the pygmies. Okay, so here in the law, we have a whole two points. Here in Monastir, Monastir, we have a whole two points. We have no combat card to use by the CP and no combat card for use by the allies. They're coming across a road which is a minus one for them. And that's about as good as it gets. Okay. Here we go. And they get a six, which is a five, which still gives them three damage. And we get a two, which is one damage. And we cannot inflict one damage on them, so it's a nothing. They inflict three on us, so this unit is gone. And our Sariel leader is gone forever and ever. Amen. However, like I said, this is a juiced unit, so it can't move into there. So, that was a win for them. <coughs> and they have fulfilled their mandatory offensive. Righto. Back to the Allies. And they've rolled an event. And they only have one card showing, which is their November events, which they can't use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize my one ops. So at least I get a card back in the B area, even if I don't know what it is. And I can conduct <gasps> what something with one ops point. Something with one. Ops point. Okay. So what I am going to do is I'm going to bring some of these units forward. So I have one, two, three, so the sixth Siberian is now in Alita, and I have three core here, and 
we're going to go one, two, three, four, five into Tilsit. Right back. If I can ever pick these up and put them back. Bat fingers, man, bullfed. No. Oh. Bat fingers, bullfed, and throw the tools away. Okay. So that's my one ops action done, and we are back to the central powers. Who have a C, which is the Sturmer and Monastere combat card. Which is CP units occupying a space in the Balkans receive a plus one die roll modifier on defense and do not have to retreat if they lose the combat. Okay. So they can't use that for its event as such. They could use it for the three ops points. In which case then they could come down and take control of law and duress, which is going to make life awfully difficult for us to come through at the moment. Or they could get one Austria-Hungarian and two German replacements. If they're not going to do that, then they have to use the November coup card. Which they could only use for one German replacement or two ops points. Okay, so let's have a look see. It is veto time. Okay, the Turks still can't really do anything, so forget about them. Now, if we look at the Italian front. need to beef up Robert Ito again, but we also really need to beef up Godizaya as well. And we're running out of troops to do that. Um, we've got one reduced SCU here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to use the November coup card for its ops points. So let's do two ops points. And the first thing we're going to do is move one of these SCUs down into here. And the second thing we we're going to do is I'm going to put a trench into Caparetto. To help to beef that up. And that's their two points. Okay. How's our time going? We're at way too much time. So we'll call it quits there and we will come back with the uh, last three actions for each side on the next video. Um, again, sorry for the stuff ups. Um, we're getting there slowly. I hope you're still enjoying and I will catch you later. Bye for now.